Hi, and welcome to SF Live TV. I'm your host, Christina Marie. Tonight, I'll be dedicating the show to prostate cancer. What is prostate cancer? Is it always deadly? And who is at risk? To answer these questions and more, I have many guests tonight, but let's start off with the executive director of the Prostate Research Institute, Dr. Mark Scholz. Hi, doctor. Thanks so much for having me today. Excellent. Very good. I, I want to ask you a little bit if you can tell us a little about what you do and about the um, Research Institute. It was primarily an educational institute. There have been so many wonderful new discoveries about prostate cancer. Today we'll probably talk a little about PSA, but the uh, need for awareness, just like with breast cancer, is huge in this business. And so we want people to... Uh, to learn as much as possible so that they don't get rushed into treatments they don't need. Mm -hmm. Now, prostate cancer, forgive me for my ignorance, what ex where exactly is the prostate? And uh, do people normally get that tested when they do a checkup? The, the prostate is a small organ down in the pelvis, not too far from the urinary bladder. And it uh, makes semen for, uh, uh, you know, for getting lovely ladies pregnant. And it's a... Um, it's detected with a blood test called PSA. Mm -hmm. And this is a very simple $30 test that can be done in any man. And when it's elevated, that's suggests that there may be some cancer there. Mm -hmm. Now that's different than what I thought. Now isn't there a test that certain men know that mm -hmm. is gonna happen if they get their prostate tested, so that's why they're very scared and they don't want to? Is that an old test or? Uh, the digital rectal exam uh, can occasionally detect prostate cancers that you don't find with PSA, but most of the cancers will be detected with PSA. And I talk more about PSA because that's not quite as intimidating. Okay, and PSA, yeah. can you tell us for we, us who don't know what PSA mm -hmm. is? It that? signifies prostate-specific antigen. Mm -hmm. It's a blood test, and it, it comes out with a numerical value. So a young man might have a PSA of two or three, and that might be normal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which brings up a question I wanted to know. Um, how many, uh, what age group or what age should you start being checked for uh, prostate cancer? Uh, we recommend men start in their 40s. Uh, the disease is fairly rare until men get up in their 50s and 60s, but it's such a simple test and such a shame if someone misses the diagnosis. So. Uh, when men are in their 40s, they can start doing the test. Mm -hmm. And now, how many people get uh, prostate cancer, or um, in the world, is there is it as prevalent as other cancers? About 200,000 new cases every year. About 25,000 in California every year, and about 25 to 30,000 men die of prostate cancer in the United States every year. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about um, Blue September here is the second uh, topic that we're discussing, and they're interlinked. Could you tell us a little bit about your involvement with Blue September? Yes, uh, the Prostate Cancer Research Institute has partnered with a program that initi was initiated in New Zealand and in Australia to bring awareness to prostate cancer. And you may have noticed uh, I've got a little color on my face here. <laughs> I have. Uh, I don't normally. I have noticed. We both have the blue stripes. And Jim is being so patient over here. Stay tuned. You're going to meet Jim and uh, hear from him as well. But It's uh -huh. a simple concept to try and get the public to face up. This is sort of a private thing that men don't like to talk about. And we want to go outside of our comfort zones and bring awareness to this, uh, this whole area. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what is the importance of early detection? Is this something that you're going to recognize right away and know that you have it? Or can you have it and kind of put it aside and put it aside until it's too late? Well, this is what's changed everything. Is 20 years ago, we didn't have PSA. And now, with PSA testing, we can catch the illness when it's so early in this process. Sometimes we don't even have to treat it. We can just monitor it. Mm -hmm. And do you think that it's the fear of, of not knowing what you have that keeps people away from getting this test done? Or why would someone not get tested? Uh, I think it's the fear. And I think it's also a lack of awareness. There's also some controversy because the, the treatments can be a little bit scary and sometimes people shy away from the treatments. Okay, which brings up the next question to me, which is if you don't bring up get the treatments and you let it go, what it, can it affect? What does it do to your body? What does it affect? Well, the main fear, of course, is if the disease spreads. And once it spreads, it's, it becomes incurable. And, uh, and it can attack different parts of our bodies and, and be fatal. So mm -hmm. it's like any cancer. It, uh, it is a, a risk of spread is the main thing. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, sexuality. 
and how it affects sexuality. Could you explain that a little bit? Yes, now that's more treatment related and there's a balance and one of the confusing things about prostate cancer is that some men have a type that doesn't need treatment and how sad it is when they undergo therapy uh, because the treatments so frequently affect sexuality and uh, oftentimes render men impotent. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about a treatment that's a very aggressive treatment right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But you believe, and in the book by the way, um, let me show you the cover of the book here, it's Invasion of the Prostate Snatchers. Now you've written this book um, to talk and deal with people that are diagnosed with prostate cancer, are all of a sudden extremely afraid of what's going to happen and they just jump into treatment without knowing that there's other options. Yeah. Is that pretty fair to say about That's what? a good summary. The main <coughs> thing that's different about prostate cancer is this is the only type of cancer where surgeons are running the show. So the doctors that treat prostate cancer that are called urologists, they tend to think surgery first. Now, patients that are smart enough to ask questions and check around, they're going to find that there are other options. But I wrote the book for the people that tend to just abdicate to the first doctor they see, and, and that's going to be a surgeon in, in this area of prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find surgeons are open to think of other types of treatment besides, because they're, what their life is is surgery, yes. so they're going to advocate that because that's what they know. That's precisely the problem. Now, there's, there's all kinds of urologists, all kinds of surgeons, and some are more open-minded and some are less open-minded. Mm -hmm. But with the, um, it, I, to me it's sad, anyone that has a single man that has surgery he didn't need, that to me that's a, a real tragedy. Definitely. Um, the book, once again, is right up there on the screen for you, Invasion of the Prostate Snatchers. And thank you very much, Dr. Mark Schultz. You're gonna